Thank you so much for coming, everyone. So glad to see you here. That's wonderful that you came out. I'd also like to thank uh, Stu and Bob of Electronic Media Services for putting this recording together. We're very grateful for that. And also the English department for supporting the art department for putting the whole Fine Arts Festival together, and especially Pat Brace. Dr. Pat Brace was an instrumental for that. And uh, also the SMSU Theater Arts Department, without whom we could not have put this together. They were very helpful getting us getting us going. And uh, I need to take a, a big moment to thank SMSU student Joel Gay. He's our sound designer for the event. Wave your hand, Joel. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, <clears throat> my, my friend Tiku Gochan and I met here at this university around the year 2000 and became fast friends uh, through the creative writing uh, program. There was a pretty hot creative writing program here at, this, at that time. And we spent long hours uh, bashing our heads together and linking arms and wrestling voices, trying to figure out where we came from as writers. What's our writing aesthetic? What, what, uh, what do we want to say? And we decided, you know what, we hate cleverness. We don't like cleverness. We really want to come from a place that's just uh, purely from compassion. We just want to start at a place from compassion and work from there. Even if our poetry stinks, that's what we want to try to do. So that's, you know, maybe there's some example of that today. I don't know. We'll find out. We, uh, we kept talking, uh, even after Tiku moved away to St. Paul, uh, and we continued our conversation via long, long emails throughout a year or two. And so this manuscript developed out of those email exchanges. So Tiku, uh, played by Kevin Hazenga, was in St. Paul. And I, Dan Wall, played by Jenna Miller, was uh, here in Marshall, Minnesota, and later in Mankato. Eventually, uh, this was a struggling time, and the early part of the manuscript reflects that. And then eventually, Tiku moved to Nepal, and he started diving into the dream world. And I did the same thing, too, from where I was in Minnesota. We both got very interested in dreams. And for us, dream, the characters in dreams were a reality. They were living, living beings. And so for us, I'll, uh, uh, most of this play is, is real. It's a, it's a non-fiction piece. It's a real thing. So that seems strange, but it was true for us. And so uh, in, in this midst of this dialogue, poems came forth uh, that to us were, were speaking from dream characters. And so it made sense to me putting this manuscript together uh, to have an angel from those worlds speak the poems. It just made sense. So the angel of Tiku is played by Ben Kiefer. And the angel of Dan is played by Emily Barton. I'll ask a few students here. A quick note in the text. Uh, uh, the text refers to a Hindu goddess called Kali. And uh, Kali is often thought of a, of a destructive goddess, but uh, she's really more of a combination creator Destroyer. She's the mother, mother of the universe for Hindu people, and so that appears in this play as well. I hope you enjoy. Please welcome our our performers. fish in the dream dies when it is carried into the waking world. It is like words. It is still a fish, but it is not alive the way it was in the dream. Tiku, write me. I miss you. I tried transcribing that tape where we talked about dreams. Our voice is so far away. So much has been lost. Water flows, but the river remains. Take care, my friend. Hello, Dan. I hope you are taking care of yourself. Trying to get back into the city's flow? Talk about a reality check. I spent most of my energy looking for jobs where I could read, so now I find myself a gas station attendant at two gas stations. I hope you will be able to transcribe the tape. It must be really interesting to listen to oneself speak with some sort of surety. Last night, I went to hear Jamaica Kincaid talk about why she began writing. 
She ended with the words, I think I got into writing so that I would not get extinguished. Take care, Dan. Love. Dear Tiku, I like Jamaica's line. I'm thinking about you, about me, about how I lost faith in words. Words came back slowly, but only a couple poems showed themselves. Oh, I finished transcribing that tape. Some words did not come through. Take care. Your friend. Let this poem end. Let this poem touch the skin of your ear. Let this poem stroke your hair. It's not clever. It knows almost nothing. Let this poem be your loved one. Let this poem touch your cheek and the crown of your head. Dear Dan, it's strange that I was thinking about the things along the same lines as your poem, and it is good to hear a reassuring echo. Simple lines need a lot of strength. I haven't been writing much because, right now, I think I need to find a psychotherapist first. I have tried to write some haiku type poems. I am glad that you are allowing the words to work their way into you again. Could you please give Beth Weatherby my regards? I will write to her as soon as I've written a little more. Take care, Dan. Rusty bicycles, forgotten since summer, shackled to the stands. By night, they are sleek animals with angry horns straining to break free. Dear Tiku, still only three poems so far since. My faith in words came creeping back. Do simple lines take more work? I'm out of balance. I said hi to Beth. Out of the blue, she said, I should have you and Tiku over for supper. Will you tell him? Said she likes her sensibilities. I'm having a synchro uh, synchronous day. The topic, translational or translational space between dreaming and waking. Yes, yes, yes. May I say I love you? Yours. Dan, about not getting extinguished? I think that is where writing really begins. Writing from a top of pile of ashes, your own, and going from there. Writing is like jumping into an empty barrel and thumping the barrel from the inside. The problem with jumping into the barrel is that it becomes sort of an escape, and one can stay stunted in the barrel. I don't know. Is taking writing too seriously a symptom of not having dealt with things in life? Like that pile of dirty laundry sitting in the room. I read a book I really liked called The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. Have you read any Adrian Tomine? Today I was reading comics by Linda Berry. I think you had shown me. Comics are a wonderful medium. I mean, craft-wise and the art of storytelling, one can cut into scenes, flash back and forth without throwing the reader off. The reader can really absorb the setting without breaking away from the rhythm of the story. Take care, Dan. By the way, I think you are a Roshi. A Zen master. Love. Dear Tiku, I hope your barrel does not go over Niagara Falls. When swimming from dreaming to waking, there is a transition, a translational space. Words want to change when they pass through this space. My friend said, no offense. Don't take yourself so seriously. Have fun. Don't be so serious. I didn't know what she meant. I love comic books. I sent Linda Berry a thank you note for writing the Freddy stories. Dan is Roshi? That seems unlikely. Take care. Ursa crawled on concrete. He crawled slowly. Worms outpaced him. They crawled over his legs and hands. Everyone tried to get off this broken slab, this old foundation. They did it. They fell in the mud. Dear Tiku, thinking of you, have you read the Freddy stories? They are hard, sad, also funny, definitely compassionate. Take care. Dan, about the dream thing, I think you should definitely explore that gray area between dreaming and waking. I really think that twilight area can create the truest art. Art that is not weakened by over-rationalization, nor watered down by the sentimentalization of the reflective mode of thinking. There is one story read by a Car Caribbean woman, Angela Hernandez, which I think really explored this realm to great effect. Words are inadequate to suggest matters of the heart. The word, the world is what it is, is all. Thank you for saying you love me. I start my counseling on Friday, and I hope it will help me come to terms with the voices in my head. In the meantime, I am reading V.S. Naipaul's A Bend in the River. I don't know if you'll really like the book. The narrator seems to know everything. Take care, love. Dear Tiku, thank you for your heartwarming. I'm glad you're doing counseling. Being a gas station attendant helps. It's basic. Take care of yourself. Where you are, more later. Your friend.
frozen lake at night. Ducks like shadows in its middle. They dug this warm core. Hello, Tiku. Are you well? Therapy? Safe? Yourself? Please let me know where you are. Take care. Love? Hello, Dan. Therapy's going all right. I've been reading Beckett's Endgame and waiting for Godot again, and it seems curiously cathartic. I don't know how to explain it. It seems to create a lot of turmoil and a sense of relief at the same time. Take care, Dan. Keep writing, and send me some of your stuff. Hello, Tiku. In my dream, I put my journal in the keeping of a good woman named Jen. We looked to you for advice, but you were just smiling. Not enough, for, not enough information. As Lena said, you might be going to Tibet. Is that true? I want to send you a story. Beth's writing group said, cupping together the day world and the dream world. It's like sleepwalking towards awakening, dreaming with thoughts wide open. Take care, my friend. Love. Hello, Dan. I don't have the energy to write. Therapy is going all right. We are just getting to the surface level of things now. About the Tibet thing, I was just joking with Raslina. Sometimes talking crazy seems to take the pressure out of my eyes. Take care. Love. My dear Tiku, I like that bit about taking the pressure off. I've been watching videos, being lazy, but not guilty. You can't push a river. I'm glad you're not writing. I think there's something else flowing across your plate. Stay grounded, my friend. Love. Ivy crouched on the wet sand. She held a fish in the cup of her hands, and the fish was a word, and the word was a fish. The fish swam around in her hands, gasping a little from fear, maybe, or from a change in the air. Ivy made a spear with her hands. I'll carry you all the way out, she said. Ivy carried the fish into that gray zone, that transitional space between the dream world and the day world. The fish thrashed, Ivy squeezed, struggling to hold on. Her hands, her shoulders felt heavy. The fish cried out. The words of the fish slipped through her fingers. Ivy yawned, tapping her mouth with one clenched fist. Dear Tiku, Ivy has a dream. She misremembers going into the waters, ocean, going deep into the uncon unconscious. We are not alone there. Ivy and the fish closely linked. The proper approach to writing the dream is through compassion, not cleverness. Thanks and take care. Hello, Dan. Find a way to dip from dream to reality to thought to narration. Or maybe something like a Calvin and Hobbes style of splicing scenes together. I'm doing okay. Today was my last day of work at the gas station. I hope to find a better paying regular hours job. I need the money. Also, reading becomes just words for me, and I watch myself becoming too monotonous. I'm trying to work on a play about two monkeys. Keep working. Take care. Hey, Tiku. Sleepwalk by Adrian Tomine. Very fine. Very few at SSU. I have a vital sense of compassion. Beth Weatherby, Adrian Lewis, Tiku Gauchan. There's a new story I hope you enjoy. Your friend. Hello, Dan. I really like the foxes and the roosters bit. The whole undercurrent of letting things happen. The complexity between letting things happen and paying attention. The beauty and simplicity. The danger of trying to see too well. Sarah's earthly wisdom, wisdom when she says, you think too much, let's eat. The deer are painted sensually. Let your experience as a painter speak. Your intuitive feel for colors break into language. Children make intuitive leaps. Let the children's voices speak. I'm in Seattle looking after my brother. He has been going through very delusional stages. I have spent the last days calming him down and guiding him back to a balanced way of looking at things. I left Minnesota at a moment's notice, but it looks like I'll have to be here for a while. It is a very delicate situation. It's almost as if you went into this world realizing his terrible loneliness. You were right when you said people have to be careful about pushing the edge. I am really touched by your mentioning my name in the same vein as Beth Weatherby and Adrian Lewis. I'll try my best to believe in compassion. Take care, Dan. Love. Dear Tiku, tiny bit harder to stay grounded in an ethereal environment populated with floating people. Use the gift while staying grounded. This miracle, the grounding of the gift. Take care. Good luck. My friend, I love you. Please remember, help ourselves. I'm sorry if I sound too pedantic or fathering or whatever, but it's true. 
your friend. Dear Dan, the meditation trip went horribly for me. It was like 10 days of a bad acid trip in total silence. When it was over, I thought I would get crushed forever. Strangely, I feel something. I don't know how to say this, but I feel better than before. During the camp, I could not get into the technique at all, and I was at a constant war in my mind with the whole meditation as a way to work through misery, etc. deal. At the end of the camp, everyone was beaming and smiling and polite, and looked like they had a big stress off their back. I too put on a smile for the sake of it, but strangely, I feel okay. I mean, I wouldn't mind feeling the way I feel now for a long time. No ecstasy gained, but it's okay. I am eagerly waiting for Ursa. Take care, Dan. Dear Tiku, I know I am not in a position to know, but no, you got more. They return to their normal lives with only a, ha with only a happy memory. You were able to do the internal work. Not happy, definitely real. I distrust anyone who offers ecstasy and enlightenment. I don't think it works that way. Certainly not in 10 days. Who wants a yo-yo diet of meditation? I like your haiku. Your friend. The quarreling dogs stop a while to look at me falling off my bike. Dear Tiku, your haiku inspired me. I hope it's not too depressing. I need to journal more. Empty the cup. Take care. Stay in good spirits. My fine, thoughtful friend. Love. Cat on a fish tank. The wire screen sagging like a tired, like a tired mind. Hello, Dan. It is more realistic than depressing. Had a fever for a while. A side effect of an of a herbal sinus drainage medicine. But getting back to normal today. Trying to work on a story, but the flow seems to have stopped. We'll have to wait a while. Journaling, emptying the cup. I think that is the only way. Take care, Dan. Between the ashed skins of the trees, this branches cradle the broken limb of another. The wind seems like sheer restlessness, but then a silence and a slow gathering which hums into a bare shimmer and builds into a yawing as the broken limb is handed down. Branch to lower branch. Now the wind is a loud sweep. And the branch is neither there. Where it inevitably must be released back to the earth. Here the wind surges against the leaves and breaks into neither a tired groan nor a wail, just a song. Hey Tiku, what's your address? I can't seem to find you. I got my first rejection letter today. Your poem affects me, yet I feel distant. Take care, my friend. Love. Hi Dan. Don't worry about getting published. It is the work that matters. If you get published, then it's great. If not, that's also okay. Have you thought about setting up your paintings? Any plans on trying out some comic book stories? Take care, Dan. Hey, Tiku. Some are beating you down? Rising above? Getting through? Getting around? Which direction? So many questions. All the same. Take care. Just hanging in there, Dan. Just hanging in there. I met an abstract artist a few weeks ago, and he works out of Winona. He comes to the gas station where I work once in a while. Take care. Let's massage our hands. Let's work them on a farm, throwing hay bales. When our hands throw words around, the weight is too much. An aching gets into the wrist. Let's make a circle with our hands and see what we're holding. Dan, I met the abstract artist again today. His name is Sable Park. He says it is okay to call him. I only meet him when he comes to fill gas. Take care. Hey Tiku, time for summer painting. I'm still making squiggly lines, colors of nature, metal shaving, shavings turning to rust. Your abstract artist acquaintance sounds interesting. Yes, I'd like to get in touch. You'd make a good teacher. 
the best teachers aren't afraid to doubt. Yours. Hello, Tiku. Or, hello, Dan. I think you have found your voice. Could you bring your paintings in to explain more? Write the emotion when the need is there, but experiment with entering deeper through your experience in the abstract arts to create the feeling behind the words in another way. Just a thought. Take care, Dan. Hi, Tiku. Artwork, emotion, alike. Kind of weird you found a hotspot for abstract artists at a gas station. What next? I'm sorry things are hectic. Me too. But I just received a gift of a book yesterday, reminding me of where I need to go. How fortunate. The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Easy, fun, deep. I hope to see you soon. Love. Animals ran in Ursa's dreams. They hopped, they slivered. Ursa loved them as he wrote a poem for them. The poem was so beautiful that most people couldn't read it. They, saw, they said shallow or boring. The poem crawled away. The poem flew, lamenting. Hi, Tiku. How's Nepal? Strange making the cultural shift. A new Ursa poem came to play. Bill Holm would say it's a bad poem because, because good poems do not contain the word beautiful. I disagree. I put in a nasty blue funk about journaling. I dreamed I plowed a field, severed a phone line, found another older line below, found myself hesitating. This dream relates symbolically to me not journaling. The phone line represents a connection to spirit or a connection to parts of the psyche. This is a warning. Take care. Ursa built a machine. It was the laughing machine. Hooray, Ursa said. Now my life will be easy. But the machine wouldn't stop laughing. Hey, Tiku, what's new? Precious person, you. I had a dream about timing. So encouraging. I hope you are well. Give me some news. Love. Ursa had to feed the horses. Two giant horses as black as the holes in the skull. But the paddock was empty. Ursa shirked like a cold dog and walked to the back. The horses were there, frolicking. Also, they had truck. They nuzzled Ursa's calves. So he opened the feed bag and pulled out a dead puppy. He began tearing the dead puppy in half, grunting with the effort. When he finished, he held the two pulpy halves of an apple in his hands. The horses smiled and waited. Ursa held out his hands, but oh no, too fast. The apple became a puppy again, squirming to be petted. The puppy licked Ursa's fingers and thumb. The horses each took a, a leg in their teeth, and Ursa pinched the puppy's throat offering the living food, crying for puppies, just doing his job. Pretty tough poem, Dan. It is almost as scary as life. I have adjusted, mostly catching up with tons of people. Kathmandu is very crowded, and the country seems to be getting poorer and poorer. I've been trying to meet some shamans and see if they can send me into some sort of a trance. Please keep writing. I am trying to take care of myself. I'm too tired most days. I need to frighten my soul awake. Love. Dear Tiku, are you staying in Nepal, enjoying discovery? Me too, I'm tired, I'm certain. We will always be together. Love. P.S. Here, some fun Russell Edson poems. They make me laugh and cry at the same time. Anti-Matter by Russell Edson. On the other side of a mirror, there's an inverse world where the insane go sane where bones climb out of the earth and recede to the first slime of love. And in the evening, the sun is just rising. Lovers cry because they are a day younger, and soon childhood robs them of their pleasure. In such a world, there is much sadness, which of course is joy. Dan, thanks for the Edson poems. Very like you, very interesting. Nice touch, we say. About the shamans, there are lots of shamans here, but I will have to look for them. About the trance thing, I just want to meet them and see how they are. If they can send me into a trance, all the better. I seriously wish they could. I feel that would help me enter into myself, because the methods that I have tried so far to get in touch with myself are not working. They tend to depress me way too much. I am also thinking of trekking into the mountains. 
and I hope I will be able to clear my head up there. Love. Dear Tiku, Ursa is male, Ursa is female. The shaman trek sounds intriguing. I want to journey more consciously. I walked in Camden State Park with Sarah last weekend, watching the dying. It was beautiful. Saw back cedar trees grown together, like the three graces. Snow will soon will come soon. The earth will sleep, and when I can't stand it any longer, spring will erupt in green flames and melt us all. I'm taking a yoga class. It presses the hell out of me. My body, a dead stick, dormant too long. But I sense a blessing, something like sunshine waiting, waiting behind a mountain for that moment. When I am ready to see it, I will burst into buds someday. Take care. Dear Dan, since I haven't met the shamans yet, I decided to go and try to scare myself awake today. I went to a temple called Pashupatinath, where the people cremate the dead. I watched some of the bodies getting cremated, and somehow watching the burning pyres seemed to lift away from me a lot of the noise inside me. I am thinking about going to this place regularly because one sees so much there. Two of the dead bodies came all alone. They were brought by hospital people, and they did not have relatives around them. The tourists, as usual, were clicking away with their cameras. There was a boy playing about on the ashes, remains of an earlier corpse, on top of one of the platforms where the bodies are cremated. It was strange trying to connect with life through the dead, but something tells me that if I can keep respecting this ritual, it will help me come to terms with a lot of things. A strange thing happened when I got home, though. I told my mom I had gone to the temple, not to the cremary, crematory grounds nearby, and she said, "You should have gone to see the cremations." Anyway, take care of yourself while I try to scare myself awake every day. Love. Dear Tiku, I was reminded of the phoenix. Love. Dan, I've been to see a psychiatrist, and he's put me on Zoloft. Anyway, I have started writing a little again. I hope it will be a long project. It will be a diary entry about my conversations with an invisible friend. Here are some of the first entries. One of them is a converted poem. Each paragraph is one entry. Tell me what you think. Take care. I wonder whether I dreamed you, or whether you dreamed me into being. I say to her, "I am a dream." She says, "You are a giant egg someone laid." At night. She sleeps within the hollows of my bones. She could sleep anywhere, and nobody would see her. But she insists on hollowing out my bones and sleeping inside them. I tell her it hurts me just a little every day. She says that without pain, no one remembers. Dear Tiku, glad you're taking action. The human brain's a body too. Dialoguing with someone in your self is a wonderful. Leave the room for play. It may be of some pleasure. Mr. Editor means well, but he has a, such a one-track mind. Good luck and have fun. Love. Ursa picked his nose. He liked the magic of making a booger appear, like a little gray rabbit coming out of a hat. First, he looks left. Then, he looks right. He looks in front and behind. All clear. He looked up and down. There was no one around, so he picked his nose. A little booger sat on Ursa's finger. I see you, I see you, the booger said. Stop it, Ursa said. You're embarrassing me. Ursa snapped his fingers, and the booger vanished. Dan, thanks for the poem. I'll take it to class tomorrow. The kids are not very young, but I'm sure the poem poem works for everybody. And it should work for adults more. Melts us back down to an initial wax. I've been working on the diary thing, and here are some entries. I hope they are not too much. Thanks for everything, Dan. Take care. It is comforting watching the flames flickering and vanishing into nothing. I say. She whacks me on the head. Look here, she says, pointing to the next pyre. The body there has pretty much become ashes. Only a chunk of charred flesh remains. Twisted and clinging to itself, it refuses to ash. The fire stoker prods it with his bamboo pole, sticks it further into the pit of the embers. Thick, bubbling blood oozes out of the meat. He adds a pile of straw on top, and the straw catches flame. The flesh refuses to ash. He adds more straw. Dear Dan. 
The Zoloft makes me sleepy all the time, but I kind of like it. It numbs me from most of my dark thoughts, and also, sometimes it stops me from obsessing. Here's a poem I just wrote. Tell me what you think. Take care, Dan. The train, with its faces stuck to its windows, you stand so close, <coughs> you stand so close, you stand so close to the tracks, I am afraid you will get struck. I think I too am one of those faces to you. Hey, Tiku, it sounds like you're taking care of yourself. I feel more at ease hearing that. Kids, interpretations, busy, milky sensibility and feeling. You are a strong man, my friend, whether you know it or not. I've heard much lately. We must be on separate paths. Say hello to your family. For me, I hope everyone is well. Take care. Love. Hello, Dan. I'm just back from a long trekking trip to the mountains. I just got back yesterday. The trip was beautiful. It was great to get away from the chaos of the city. The people in the village seem so much wiser, yet so more naive at the same time. It is almost as if this rapid modernization in the cities and the oppressive regimes that have ruled Nepal for centuries have silenced the inherent wisdom of these people. I have scrapped my Invisible Friend project. I am working on another one, based on a folk tale figure called Kichkani. I have tried to write a few beginnings, but I will send them to you when I feel that I have found my voice. About your poems, the kids had all sorts of interpretations. They come from a different background than the kids in America, and most of them are girls. They mostly thought that your poems were love poems, and they were trying to read some sort of a coded message between your lover and you in most of your poems. Take care, Dan, and keep writing. Love. Hey, Tiku. Thanks for the update. Mountain trip. Envious. Did you have a chance to let the countryside enter? I hope to go camping by myself in northern Minnesota next summer. Boundary waters. Find the lonely parts of ourselves and love them. I visited my kids. Always nice, but always a sad experience to part. Always, in everyone's life, a series of partings. Love. Ursa kissed a cat. Her whiskers tickled. She licked Ursa's cheek and whispered in his ear. Why don't you kiss my sister, she said. She too is lovely in her way. Okay, Ursa said, not thinking. The cat played with the string tied to a rope tied to a big red curtain. She pulled on the string and the curtain spread to show a stage, bare except for a jar. Her sister swam in formahide. She meowed bubbles. Her skeleton showed. Now play, the cat said, and clawed at the lid until it clattered on the stage. The smell knocked Ursa down. Ursa said, er, like gasping out of like gasping out his name to find his feet again. You promised, the cat whined. Ursa stepped into the jar. The liquid was warm. The smell was not too bad, more like blood than anything. The cat sister smiled shyly, hoping to play, waiting to be kissed, wanting to come out of the jar. The curtain rippled at the part. This isn't for a hide at all, Ursa said, and bowed his head and stroked the cat's sister's cheek, and knelt to, to kiss her paw as if to say, let's get ready to play, let's get ready to stretch and moan, let's get ready to get ready being born. Dan, the cat story is great. It sounds like a Kafka piece that a Tibetan monk would write fresh from a long compassionate sit. Please keep trusting where you're going. I'm writing a series of poems. It is about my, the narrator's, trysts with a folklore figure called Kichkandi. Kichkandis are supposed to be witches who lure men to drain them of their sexual energies, etc. Some people say that Kichkandis are the ghosts of women who lived ostracized lives and who never knew the meaning of love. They were not cremated in the right manner during their deaths because they were witches, etc. Some say that they haunt the gods where they were people are cremated. Some say they haunt river banks. Here are my attempts. Take care, and please send me more. You swam in amniotic fluid. Your heartbeat synchronized perfectly with the gentle gonging that rippled all around. In the chaos that surrounded the womb were spores and seeds that you would later name. And your fingers were tracing intricate love mandalas on the walls of the placenta whose outer lining stretched 
into eternity. Tiku, wow, wow, really amazing poems. More later, love. When I offer you an image of you as a child, you laugh. I have scraped my marrows to mold this image of you. It wasn't easy. The eyes would not shut in peace as if the heat under your eyelids would forever prop your eyes in a stare back at mocking mortal eyes. The hardest part was forming your skeleton. I dreamed you had scattered your bones and arranged them and rearranged them to create vortexes from within which the world would numb to a whisper. And now you laugh. Perhaps I am unaware that as you lived, you learned to breathe an air from beyond the binding that we live with. You dig your nails into the image to produce scars all over it, and then you dip it in the river. And when the water trapped in the scars glitters like many little moons, your laughter sounds like a call and response song between you and the spotted owls that are crying in the distance. Hi, Tiku. I haven't written. I have read and reread your Kitchkandi poems. They drift through my insides like ghost breath or glowing mist. Ethereal. Translation magic. And here's my prayer for you. Go, go, go. Into your rich flowing vein. Please take care of your body and yourself. I value you. This direction is good. It looks at shadows. It has a theme restraining. Embracing? The writer while liberating, letting you have the freedom. Damn, Tiku, these poems are so fine. Love. Dear Dan, it's a relief to hear from you. I thought I was going insane with what I was doing. I had this urge to write, but then after writing, the next morning is so dry. By the way, the idea of finding a theme is a result of my reading Ursa, with its associated narrative and the reading of and reading Joe's letters to Wendy with its narrators placed in a limited setting. I've been scribbling about one poem a day. I think I'll shore up all the lines together finally. Here is some more. Please send me your new writing. Love. The flickering flames scorch a deeper red on the red painted walls. I see eyes everywhere. My half open eyelids are greening clamshells from the shore. The pupils of the eyes, snake eggs painted black. We keep winding down, and then the tunnel opens wider. Here it is warm. There is a spring. Dear Tiku, gone Wednesday through Sunday, children and family, thanks for sending the new Kichkandi poems. Trust my friend. Yours for having fun, yet staying grounded. Dear D Dan, glad to know that you have been with your kids, too. Write and paint in a pretty professional setting. I have been jotting down some poems. The kids in the school that I am teaching in now are very intelligent. The essays and book reports they write are astonishing, forcing me to catch up to them. Here are some more poems. The Kitchkandi is almost turning into Kali, the mother now. I hope you are taking care of yourself. I hope you are sharing your energy with your kids and basking in the glow they provide. If I get into Mankato, I'll be able to see you there. Love. The moon is beautiful tonight. It is full and heavy, cold, still, death-like, granite. So many pyres today. There are some burning on the sandy banks. Not enough platforms. Even so, lucky souls. The gypsy children running around in their front yards, the river's edge downstream from the ghats have the moon in their bellies. The pyres light their fires and I think the flame will burn longer in them than in others. They do not need the moon like we do. They are in their element always, unlike you who have waxed full today. You weave through the children, unseen, yet pretending that you two are part of the game. When the children scatter, you two run after them, faster, faster. I take you. My body knows more than my brain. I think that when I think I know, I really only free the flow. I got a cat this summer, named her Kali. Sarah named her Nina, so sometimes we call her Kali. Her two favorite things are kiss and attack. We never know for sure if we're going to get licked or bitten. Take care. My friend, I will write again soon. Love. Dear Dan, 
I have worked on some more poems. Now I'm trying to set them to some sort of format. I have tried to number them, but now it's mostly Mother Callie poems. I'll attach the folder to this mail. By the way, say hi to Sarah from me. Have you listened to the new Bjork album? Take care, and send me your new stuff too. Love. My birth chart is tied around my head. You set it on fire, and then inhale the burnt flakes. You push me to the ground, shower me in black bile vomit. You plod beside the river farther, weaker, farther. You won't be back tonight. The black bile is in my blood now. The night jasmine's white flowers drift around me, opening a portal through which the moon is an oasis stop and the stars stepping stones. Hi, Jiku. Thanks again. Are you using a different approach? Less dialogue between the self and another entity? I was thinking about you a lot on Sunday. Lonesome for a like-minded poet. I like craft, yes, of course, but not craftiness, especially not when lacking compassion. I think I got into a funk about this after going to an open mic reading and hearing too many pieces, full of teen angst, too many pieces that way. I've been listening to Bjork, so delightful, so prayerful. I've been listening to Bulgarian folk music. This one song I can't get enough, so much like a sadness trance. Even so, my spirits are good. Take care, my friend. I miss you. Love. Hello, Dan. I have written some more with the help of the mother chant. The poems are taking turns, but I think I'll need to research a bit more for the ones that will follow. Nepal is an amazing place. The systemic and social political injustice here, the absolute powers of the people who have ruled Nepal and crushed its people so hard to ignore. I think I'll be lashing out against the whole system in my poems. I have this real need to lash out, and I hope I'll be able to do so without sounding too crass. Right now, the country is under a state of emergency, so the people's human rights are being trampled because there is the need to protect the country. If the kids seem to be too angst-filled, I hope at least their angst is honest. I am thinking of the painting you gave me. By the way, sad trance is great. I've been immersing myself in trance in the evenings mostly. With the emergency in place, it's getting a little hard to get to the gots around dusk. Love. Ursa couldn't help it. When he walked through light, his body cast a shadow of words onto paper. So he picked up a pen and traced each letter carefully. What else could he do? I ask you to teach me to sing. You peel off my skin and expose me to the many-layered cold of the darkness. 